If you were about to lose everything, your home, your family, your job, would you make a deal with forces beyond your comprehension? And more importantly, would you be able to deal with the consequences? That's the question posed in Inktober's Day 5 map. In this illustration, an archaeologist comes across a ship that seems to be unaffected by the elements after hundreds of years of being beached on the shores of a small, misty fishing town. Despite what the locals say, and despite the warnings against going there, he decides that this could be the discovery of his career, and he has to do whatever it takes to save it. Aboard the ship, he hears these voices yelling at him, screaming at him to go away, to stay back, but he thinks that it's just the townspeople having gotten into his head and making him paranoid. Eventually, he enters the cabin of the ship, preserved just like everything else, and somehow the candles in the cabin are still lit, even after hundreds of years. He obviously assumes that somebody came in here before him, tainting his archaeological site and possibly making off with anything valuable. However, seated in the captain's chair, he sees this skeleton with an odd deformity. It seems like it would be something that would limit the captain's capabilities, but pirates are kind of accepting when it comes to disabilities. On the table in front of him is a map lined with cursed eldritch symbols that the archaeologist, even with all of his knowledge of world languages, doesn't understand. Everything around him screams at him not to take the map, but will he? Find out in my Inktober 2023 book short story collection coming out on my website, afterplagueart.myshopify.com. It's coming out on October 14th, so one week from today. Be sure to go there, bookmark it, and you can also get prints of any of the illustrations that you see today. If you do end up buying anything, please at me on social media, DM me, I would love to see what you got. So this illustration took me quite a long time. And it's definitely the one that's taken the longest so far. Something about the complexity of the rib cage and the bones really confused me. I enjoy drawing skeletons, and I do it semi-often, but I do always get confused about sort of that torso anatomy, the spine, the ribs, the collarbone, and the like scapula overlapping. I never feel like I quite get it right, but I feel like it's close enough on this one that it's passable. So. I, I it did take a long time though for me to figure it out. The other thing that took me a long time was the wood grain. It did take me a while to make that level of detail, but I think it turned out well. I think the only thing that I would have liked to have put more time into that I didn't just because I was running out of time and I needed to get this done is the map. I feel like it lays a little bit too flat on the table and I would have preferred for it to have a little bit more curl, a little bit more volume in it. And um, yeah, I think that's the only thing that I really don't like. I felt like it was really important in this illustration to provide a lot of depth, a lot of contrast, and a lot of darkness in the illustration. So I spend a lot of time making sure that areas that I want to draw attention to are nice and dark, like the screaming mouths of the skeleton and the eye holes as well of the skulls. I had a little bit of a rough time trying to figure out how to combine the two into one singular skull, but I do think it turned out looking pretty natural and also pretty frightening. Essentially, the, the map does something to affect your physical form as well as your sanity is basically what the curse of the map is, but it does offer to lead you to treasures and riches and stuff beyond your wildest dreams, like most tempting treasure does. So yeah, this one took me quite a long time. It took me nearly six hours, but not quite. And I think only one other one that I've done has gotten close. I've actually, surprise, completed all of the Inktobers at this point. I really tried to get out ahead of it. And yeah, I, I'm very excited to finally be completed. Uh, they did take a long time. <laughs> they, they were quite intense, but I do think these are some of the best illustrations I've done yet. And I'm very, very pleased with how they all turned out. I think that they have a consistent style across the board, which was really important to me to maintain the same level of detail, the same style across all of the pieces. Prints of each piece are also available on the day that they're released, and if you want to see them before these videos come out, follow me on all my other social media. I am After Plague on pretty much everything. I'm After Plague on Instagram, Threads, TikTok, uh, Twitch, and I am After Underscore Plague on Twitter. 
At this point in the illustrations on day five, I had this idea that I wanted to stick to for most of the illustrations and I didn't quite do it, but I might do it next year. I wanted to do almost like an SCP like extended universe with all of my characters, all of the plots, all of the objects, the events that happen. And within the story, within the book, within the collection, there are some characters that overlap and there are also some objects that overlap. For example, there's a Necronomicon, a book that appears in I, I think three stories in over the course of the collection. So if you do end up buying it, let me know if you spot where I spread the Necronomicon across the universe. The only reason I didn't do that is because unfortunately on day one dream, which again you can check out in the iCard, there is sort of an apocalypse going on and uh, I didn't really consider the implications of that unless that event is the furthest back in the timeline, like the latest date. But I didn't really have time to plan out this big elaborate connected story. Next year, maybe, I will be doing something like that because I'm writing my own prompt list next year. I don't want to have to do everything in a month again. So I'm going to start even earlier and hopefully be able to release my next book because I am going to be releasing another one next year. This is a yearly thing, baby. My next one, hopefully I'll be able to release on October 1st. So the final touches I put on this illustration were the lights coming off of the candles and I wanted to make sure that they looked nice and dark as well. So I went in and shaded them. This illustration took me about five hours and 45 minutes. And I'm, I'm really pleased with how it turned out. I think it looks fantastic. So this is Inktober Day 5 Map. What would you do if you had a sword that would provide you with untold riches if only you satiated its bloodlust? That is the idea behind day six golden. Now I had this idea pretty quickly for this prompt because I thought that often the reason that we see greed is bad is because it keeps resources from other people, but also the violence that people commit in order to satiate their greed. So I thought about translating that literally into violence. The knight obtains a sword on the battlefield from a fallen enemy, and he finds out that when he slices somebody, when he stabs somebody, their blood turns into gold coins. And he fights his way through the battlefield, and at the end of it, it's covered in blood and glittering gold. And so he takes the sword, and he looks at the sword running with blood, and he sees the blood run into the crevices of the sword, and it spells out the sword's name, Fortuna. So he takes this sword to the council of elders in his village and they decide to perform an experiment to see if the sword is godly or not so they bring forth a prisoner and they ask the knight to execute him and when he's executed he flows with gold and so the elders determine that this must be a sword from god that rewards you for slaying evil people so go forth and slay evil people as long as you pay your tax back towards the council right so the knight goes forth and he's he's performing his duty he's giving back to his community and he's becoming fabulously wealthy but he starts to be haunted by the thought that maybe the sword doesn't know good from evil how can the sword determine who's moral and who's not and he goes on a mission to figure out whether or not the sword truly is a determiner of who is evil and who is not. So again, I had an idea from this pretty early on, but the initial composition I started out with was not good. It was more of like him from a distance kneeling over a body with coins flowing into a pit, which was fine. It's just that he was incredibly small off in the distance and I was having trouble showing how the coins flowed. So I decided to do this illustration instead where he's holding somebody who's clearly not a combatant. She's just a woman, but he's stabbing her anyway and the gold coins are still flowing out of her. So you have to ask, is this woman secretly an enemy of their country, of their state, or is the sword not actually a gift from God that allows you to slay evil and gain massive fortune from it. I really wanted to emphasize sort of the gravity 
in this illustration with her dress and her hair both flowing down and the, the coins flowing out of her. I think I maybe could have made them a little darker, a little bloodier looking, but I really enjoyed adding sort of splashes and splatters of blood after the fact. I have this really wonderful set of blood splatter brushes that I have been invaluable during this Inktober, so I've been really, really pleased with those. I think one of the weaker parts of this illustration is her face. I was really struggling with the angle of her nose, but I think it's sort of, it's in a position where it fools your brain into thinking this is okay, you know? But if you looked at it up close, it might, it might look a little bit strange. This is not the only guy I drew in armor. And when I drew him, I was like, I hate drawing armor. I don't want to draw any more armor. And then a couple weeks later, I completely forgot about that. And I drew more armor and I hated it. It's just so complicated. And if you get it incorrect, it's so finicky. And I do reference other people's illustrations of armor, specifically like how, what, what the different pieces of armor look like. And that helps immensely because I cannot figure it out on my own. I, I feel like it's a Rubik's cube. I have no idea what's going on with armor most of the time. So I think it ended up looking okay. I am not a hundred percent sure what's going on with the connection between like his leg plates and his torso. Um, I'm just, I'm not 100% sure what that exactly is. But I think, eh, again, it doesn't really matter. It's kind of a small detail. And I was able to sort of hide it in the shadows. If I had a little bit more time, I would have liked to have made the blade more impressive, imposing, more, more eye-catching. Because it is sort of the star of the show, right? And I would have liked to make it more detailed, but unfortunately, again, this one took me a lot of time and I do, I do end up running out of time with a lot of these. But if I, if I had a little bit of extra time, that's what I would like to do. So this one took me four hours and 45 minutes, and this is day six, golden. If you had the ability to make the perfect partner for yourself, would you? What about if that partner came with a steep cost? That's the idea behind Inktober's Day 7 drip. So in this story, a guy is obsessed with his ex-girlfriend and she broke up with him because he was too controlling and he is so irritated. He 100% believes that he can get her back, but he doesn't know how until he goes to an antique shop and he comes across a book. It's old, it's dusty, and the cover feels really weird, like old crumbling leather. It looks worthless, but for some reason the pages are gilded in gold, and gold is painted on the front in runic marks. He opens the book and he finds that it's full of every language in the world, and he can't understand most of them. <laughs> but eventually he comes across his page that says his full name at the top. And he reads further and he finds out that it's a ritual for a perfect girlfriend. He just needs to make her out of wax. He doesn't really read the ritual thoroughly before gathering the ingredients and spending weeks sculpting the perfect girlfriend out of wax. Eventually, on the night she's supposed to come alive, he puts his intentions into her. He thinks about his ex-girlfriend. He's made her, but more perfect. He's, he's telling her what she should be, but more like what he wants. And when he goes to bed the next morning, he wakes up and his girlfriend is alive. They spend the winter months together. They enjoy themselves. But when the spring rolls around and things start to heat up, he starts to hear this drip, drip, drip. Maybe a frozen pipe that burst during the winter. Drip, drip, drip. Or maybe it has something to do with his girlfriend who is made of wax. <laughs> so essentially my idea here was just to draw her melting, fading away, dripping down. Um, I just really wanted to lean into the whole gross aspect of it. It was definitely a challenge because you don't see, well, at least I didn't want to look up a lot of images of melting faces. I knew a lot of things that would be great reference, but I'm a bit of like a gore weenie. I hate it. I can't stand it. It makes me so uncomfortable. So I knew like, oh, you know, I should probably like look at Hellraiser, that one transformation scene, or, you know, one of the Saw movies, but I just, I can't bring myself to do it. So I had to sort of get creative and make the melting look a little bit more 
like a mask almost, like a, a drooping latex sort of mask. And I, I think it turned out okay. I really like her eyes, how they feel heavy, how they feel like they're running down her face. I, th I think that her nose does add to this idea that she's melting and her features are falling off. I do think something that didn't translate super well is that the back of her skull is supposed to be exposed. You know, her hair is supposed to be sort of falling out in clumps as her scalp melts off and falls to the ground, you know? But I feel like maybe that just doesn't translate completely. So, you know, I I'm, I'm not sure it's 100% red. You guys will have to tell me. I do also think that her hands are at kind of an odd angle, um, her hands and shoulders. I think if you don't look too hard, it's fine, but I do definitely think that they're a weaker part of this illustration. I do like how it looks like she's pulling and clawing at her face, though. I think that the tension against her fingers really does look like it's there. And again, her eyes are, are one of my favorite part of this one of my favorite parts of this illustration. I just spent a lot of time essentially making the wax drips look dimensional, look 3D and look like they're actually falling. Um, it's stripping down her wrist, uh, all that kind of thing. Really almost like viscous, more slime than wax, you know? And I really like how it turned out. I think it turned out really good. This one thankfully didn't take me too long. Some of the ones that are just sort of portraits don't take me as long because there's not as many elements that I'm unfamiliar with. Um, especially some of the other ones where I'm drawing multiple subjects like Golden, I was drawing both the knight and the woman. That's two subjects compared to one here. So this one is gonna take me a lot less time. Because there wasn't a lot else going on in this illustration detail-wise, I did end up putting a lot of detail into her hair as well as the drips on her skin to balance things out. So as I'm finishing up here, this is day seven drip. And I want to thank you so much for watching my Inktober part two video. Part one is in the iCard if you want to go watch that. But thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please leave me a like. And if you want to see more, subscribe. The next Inktober video is going up next Wednesday. So that's going to be Wednesday the 11th, I think. So I will see you then. Again, if you want to see any of these illustrations before then, keep up with me on my social media. I'm after Plague on pretty much everything, Instagram, TikTok, Twitch, threads, and I'm after underscore Plague on Twitter. Again, prints are available in my shop, afterplagueart.myshopify.com. Go there and bookmark it for the book's release on October 14th. I'm very excited to see if any of you guys pick that up. So thank you again so much for watching. I will see you next time, and I hope you survive this post-Plague world.